What is up guys, this is Luke Hill for Kick Crew, and this is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. So this is AMD's most affordable Zen 3 CPU and it's priced currently at £280 or so in the UK and $299 MSRP US dollars of course. Now we know this chip has technically been launched for a while, availability however is still poor. We were hoping it would have picked up by now but that does not seem to have been the case in the UK at least. So we're just pressing on ahead with this review and we're just crossing our fingers that you can indeed get one of these chips pretty soon at the quoted £280 retail price. That's the figure we'll be looking at throughout the review. But let's have a look at some of the specs and then we'll jump into the performance. Before we do that though, if you like what we do here at Kickeroo and you want to support us, give us a like, hit subscribe, comment on the video, do all that YouTube stuff. Head on over to the main Kickeroo webpage, that really helps us out and it supports us. And you can also check out our Patreon page and our merch store where you can buy a cool t-shirt like this. Let's get back into the review. We've already discussed the Zen 3 architecture in our Ryzen 9 launch video, so if you want more details about the IPC improvements and some of the under the hood tweaks for Zen 3 versus Zen 2, make sure you check out that video where you can see more details. The Ryzen 5 5600X is a 6 core 12 thread processor and that's a single CCD chip and because it's Zen 3 it's also single CCX. The base frequency is 3.7 GHz and you get a maximum quoted boost frequency of 4.6 GHz. It's a 65 watt TDP part and comes bundled with the Wraith Stealth Cooler, so that's the smaller aluminium heatsink version. And of course being Zen 3 is still using TSMC 7 nanometer process technology, still got the same DDR4 support, the same PCIe support and of course the same AM4 platform support. This time around you get 32 megs of L3 cache because it's a single CCD chip and you also get 3 megs of L2 cache because that's 512k per core. Clearly the pricing of the Ryzen 5 5600X is $50 MSRP higher than the Ryzen 5 3600X or 3600XT that it's replacing. Now $50 extra at $250 to $299 is a bigger deal than the $50 that we saw for the 16 core or the 12 core Zen 3 chip because that $50 bump is across the board. So that's going to be quite important that the Ryzen 5 delivers performance that is justifiable for its price increase. Realistically though, the actual price increase is probably somewhere in the order of 80 to 100 pounds because obviously with Zen 2, the Ryzen 5 that we all went for was the 3600 non-X or the 3600X. However, these are becoming increasingly difficult to find, number one, in stock anyway, and number two, for that sub 200 pound sweet spot. So the value perspective may not be perhaps as bad as it looked a few months ago. Of course, we'll have to check out the performance to see if that is the case. Given its price point of £280, the Ryzen 5 5600X actually occupies quite a neat position and a neat little window in the competition space. The 5600X is around £30 more expensive than the Core i5 10600K 6 core 12 thread competitor, and it has better low cost motherboard support and a bundled cooler though, so that £30 might be justifiable for the AMD part. And then the Ryzen 7 3700X is around £20 more expensive than the 5600X, but it does offer additional cores, so 8 cores, however they are the older Zen 2 architecture. So that will be an interesting comparison in both productivity and gaming. And then of course our other comparison will come from the Ryzen 5 3600XT, which is about £230 in the UK. And at the moment we pick this chip because it's the fastest Zen 2 part with 6 cores, so it's a logical competitor, even if the other Zen 2 6 core Ryzen 5s were better value. Let's jump on into the testing. Creating the heart of our test system are the X570 motherboards that we're using. Our primary testing was handled on the Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Hero using BIOS 2311. We also used the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme for some additional validation testing just to make sure we're happy with the numbers that we're seeing from the Asus motherboard. Memory comes in the form of a 2x16 gig 3600MHz C16 kit from Corsair, and that's Vengeance LPX DDR4. Cooling comes in the form of a Fractal 280mm AIO with 1600rpm fan speeds. Our graphics card of choice is the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle OC. So this triple fan factory overclocked graphics card is a performance powerhouse and will deliver the frame rates necessary for us to identify performance differences between these high-end processors on offer. The power supply is the Seasonic Prime TX1000 one kilowatt titanium rated unit. For our Intel test system, we use identical hardware across the board. However, we obviously switch out the motherboard and this is to an MSI Meg Z490 ACE motherboard. 
The Intel chips ignore their quoted TDP figures when XMP is applied using our test motherboard. As such, the Core i5-10600K, so the notable competitor for this chip, actually runs at 4.5 GHz all-core frequency. Make sure you check out the Kikuru webpage for more details on the test system, the test procedures, the comparison hardware, the settings we used. You can find all the details over there. We pushed the Ryzen 5 5600X to an impressive 4.8 GHz all-core frequency using our X570 motherboards. This was using 1.325 volts in the UEFI, but realistically about 1.3 volts was actually delivered to the CPU. That's a really, really impressive overclock and is actually higher than the higher core count chips that we tested for Zen 3 by about 100 MHz. But importantly, that 4.8 GHz all-core is faster than the quoted maximum boost frequency out of the box, so there is basically no downside as long as you have stability. We also did some quick precision boost overdrive testing, and this was actually pretty decent given that the shackles are somewhat in the power department out of the box. So you get 76 watts of power budget out of the box in stock configuration, PBO removes that power limitation, and we saw the chip operating at 4.65 GHz single core and 4.65 GHz all core. So you do get a nice bump versus the stock configuration of about 100 to 150 megahertz. But given that we got 4.8 gigahertz all core, that's the testing we'll be focusing on. As a side note, it'll be interesting to see how Precision Boost Overdrive 2 and its undervolting behavior will influence the performance of the chip in upcoming BIOS versions. That'll be quite cool to see. Anyway, let's get on into the performance results. Cinebench NT sees the 5600X making a positive start. Performance is 27% quicker than the 10600K and 16% better than the considerably cheaper Ryzen 5 3600 XT. The 8-core 3700X does score higher though, with a 10% lead over the 5600X, but that gap narrows significantly with the Zen 3 parts at 4.8 GHz overclock. We see the 5600X hitting around 4.45 to 4.55 GHz all-core frequency in the demand in Cinebench and Blender NT workloads. This clock speed value holds up well using standard AIO cooling, but it is clearly thermal headroom spare for lower spec coolers. It is the power and current limits that cap the speed, so precision boost overdrive and manual overclocking clearly give the chip more room to push. Given the reduced maximum boost clocks, it comes as no surprise to see the 5600X scoring slightly below other Zen 3 chips. A performance result of 600 points is certainly a strong step up of 23% versus the 10600K, 13% versus the 3600XT, and 18% versus the 3700X. These are big gains and our manual overclock to 4.8 GHz pushed the 5600X's lead even higher. We observed clock speed values as high as 4650 MHz when running the Cinebench 1T test, even if only for small periods of time. As with other Ryzen 5000 chips, this is above the quoted boost frequency and represents a solid result. The 5600X comfortably outperforms the cheaper Core i5 and Ryzen 5 parts in Blender, but the slightly more expensive Ryzen 7 3700X and its 8 Zen 2 cores are notably faster in this test. If you were looking at purchasing the 5600X for a budget multi-threaded Blender rig, the 8 core Zen 2 offering looks to be a more valuable solution at the price point. The Ray sees the 5600X continuing to deliver strong performance leads over the cheaper Core i5 and Ryzen 5 chips. This time, the overclocked 5600X matches the stock clock 3700X performance and is within touching distance of the 4.7 GHz 10700K. 7-zip compression is 32% faster on the Ryzen 5 5600X versus the Core i5 10600K. Zen 3 yet again scores very well in this test, thus allowing the 6-core 5600X to roughly match Zen 2 and Comet Lake 8-core parts. Decompression is where the Zen architecture really comes into its own, as proven by the whopping 45% performance lead versus the 10600K. Our handbrake H264 test is quicker on the 5600X by 24% versus the 10600K and 13% versus the 3600XT. The Zen 2 8 core 3700X regains the performance lead to the tune of 11% in this test, however. Architectural proficiencies aid the Zen 3 part scoring in our handbrake H265 test. This allows the 6 core 5600X to comfortably outperform the Comet Lake and Zen 2 6 cores in addition to the Ryzen 7 3700X. You still get the half speed write performance that is common for the single CCD Ryzen processors on Zen 2 and Zen 3, and memory latency versus Zen 2 continues to show improvement. F1 2020 at 1080p sees the Ryzen 5 5600X delivering the same promising numbers as the higher end Zen 3 siblings. AMD's newer 6 core chip comfortably outperforms its logical Zen 2 and Comet Lake competitors. At 1440p, the performance is still strong, with AMD's Zen 3 6 core basically matching the chart toppers when accounted for error and variance margins. The Core i5 does score a little better at 1440p though. 
Zen 3 works superbly with GTA 5 and this trend continues with the 5600X despite its relative core count deficit versus Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 chips. Intel's Comet Lake and AMD Zen 2 competitors are no match for the 5600X here. This is a strong victory for the new Ryzen 5. At 1440p, the same performance trend holds true. The Comet Lake and Zen 3 big boys are faster, but the 5600X comfortably beats its logical price point competitors such as the 10600K and 3700X. Metro Exodus once again has the 5600X beaten its relevant competition, though its lead versus the 10600K is slim when both CPUs are at stock. 1440p performance shows preference for the Intel 10600K by a minor margin, and the performance boost for the 5600X versus Zen 2 is indistinguishable with this level of GPU demand. Red Dead Redemption 2 using our test setup continues to show strong preference for Intel Comet Lake chips. Here, the Core i5-10600K beats the Ryzen 5 5600X by a measurable and somewhat useful margin. AMD's 6-core 5600X does, however, keep pace with the other Zen 3 parts and slightly outperforms the Zen 2 offerings. At 1440p, we see more of the same Intel preference, and this time the performance uplift from Zen 2 to Zen 3 is compressed heavily, except for the low FPS numbers on the 3600XT. Shadow of the Tomb Raider performs well on Zen 3, and has the 6-core 5600X smashing the performance numbers of its Zen 2 and 10600K competitors. AMD's cheapest Zen 3 offering is actually competitive versus the 10700K here. At 1440p, we see the same performance trend with the Ryzen 5 5600X being much faster than the 10600K, 3600XT and 3700X. The Division 2 sees Ryzen 5 5600X once again outperforming the 10600K, 3700X and 3600XT. Intel's Core i5 provides the toughest fight, but the Zen 3 6-core is simply faster outside of a 5GHz Intel overclock. Cranked up to 1440p, performance is similar across the board, so there are no inherent upsides or downsides to the Ryzen 5 5600X in this example. A simple summary of the game in results is that Ryzen 5 5600X is the best CPU you can buy at this price point unless the only game you play is Red Dead Redemption 2. Victories for the Zen 3 6-core chip are consistent and often sizable against the Intel Core i5 10600K as well as the Zen 2 Ryzen 5 3600XT and Ryzen 7 3700X. You can even trade blows versus the more expensive 8-core Ryzen 7 5800X and Core i7 10700K when running the 5600X. That means more money can be set aside to plow into a better GPU, so the 5600X looks like great value for gaming. Power consumption is absolutely superb from the 65W TDP Ryzen 5 5600X. Six Zen 3 cores with a power budget of 76 watts makes for a very light energy requirement. The wall draw levels are more than 20 watts lower than the Ryzen 5 3600XT and Core i5-10600K competitors when loaded at stock clocks. Overclocking increased the load power draw by a little over 30 watts, but this sub 180 watt wall reading is still easily tolerable, even with modest cooling and motherboard VRM hardware. The Ryzen 5 5600X actually does reasonably well in the Cinebench based performance per watt chart. Despite a 2 core deficit versus the 3700X, AMD's new Ryzen 5 actually manages to match its efficiency. Points per watt are far greater for the Zen 3 5600X versus its Core i5 10600K and Ryzen 5 3600XT competitors. Despite the Zen 3 price increases, the 5600X does reasonably well for our Cinebench weighted performance per pound money chart. The 5600X looks to be better value in this test versus the Core i5 10600K, but the more expensive Ryzen 7 3700X is a stiff competitor. The same can be said for the Ryzen 5 3600XT, an even tougher competition would come from the cheaper, but almost as fast Ryzen 5 3600 non-X and 3600X, if you're able to find them in stock again. Out of the box temperatures using the same premium 280mm AIO cooler that is used on all other testing are sub 60 degrees Celsius under load and are easy to handle. Even with cheaper coolers, we would have no worries about thermals for the Ryzen 5 5600X. That's especially true when running the stock precision boost or automatic precision boost overdrive settings that adjust frequency and voltage based on temperature readings. Overclocking pushed the chip close to 80 degrees Celsius with our unoptimized voltage setting. Again, this is no cause for concern with a premium all-in-one liquid cooler, but we'll start to get a little on the toasty side on small and budget air heat sinks. There we have it then. The Ryzen 5 5600X proves itself as a efficient, competitive, really worthwhile processor in both gaming and productivity tasks, and it doesn't break the bank. If we focus on some of the value comparisons, the 5600X versus the £250 Core i5-10600K that actually ships without a cooler and operates on a either less feature-rich or slightly more expensive Intel platform. The AMD part is a no-brainer in that scenario. 
It's faster across the board in productivity, it's more power efficient, and it's a better gaming chip. That's just a no-brainer. Yes, it's slightly more expensive, but roughly the same price when you factor in the cooler, perhaps, depending on whether you go for an aftermarket cooler on both chips or not, but it is by far the better solution. Versus the Ryzen 5 3600 XT, which comes in at about £230 in the UK, we also feel that the 5600X at about £280 is a better buy than that chip. Again, you get far superior productivity performance, but importantly, you get much better gaming performance from the Zen 3 architecture, and you still maintain that excellent overclocking capability that we saw with the XT chips from the refined TSMC 7 nanometer design. So, this is a better solution. It is more expensive, but if you're a gamer especially, you will prefer this chip. However, the Ryzen 5 3600 non-X and 3600X are cheaper if you can get them cheaper, sub 200 pound sweet spot, and they're tough competitors, so the value perspective becomes a little bit blurred there and depends on whether you want the better gaming performance of the Ryzen 5 5600X and the better productivity performance, or whether you want the cheaper six core Zen 2 chips and then can plow that money saved into something else like a better graphics card. Versus the 3600XT, we like the 5600X, but we can still see some value arguments for the cheaper Ryzen 5s on Zen 2, if you can find them sub 200 pounds. And then versus the Ryzen 7 3700X, if gaming is your focus, then the 5600X is the obvious choice as it is a far superior chip for gaming versus the 300 pound Ryzen 7. If you want productivity performance and purely, mainly budget productivity performance in like multi-threaded rendering and things like that, then the Ryzen 7 3700X is going to be the better buy. It's eight Zen 2 cores, perform very well, typically better than the 5600X. But if you want different productivity performance, so for example, perhaps video editing or file compression, the 5600X actually holds its own pretty well thanks to the improvements from the Zen 3 architecture. And if you want a balance between gaming and productivity, then you'd say that the Ryzen 5 5600X is a really good choice there because of the superb gaming figures and the still quite competitive productivity figures even despite its two core deficit versus the 3700X and that's the efficiency of the Zen 3 architecture right there. So let's finish this one out by summarizing a few of the points. If you're interested in gaming and gaming only, the Ryzen 5 5600X realistically becomes the new go-to gaming processor. At £280, yes it's still an expensive CPU for some of the budget buyers out there but it's a superb chip and it offers gaming performance that's competitive versus some of the higher priced siblings while still maintaining money in the bank to invest in a better GPU. This is the new go-to gaming king in our opinion when you're looking for that balance between money spent and performance gained. Really is a superb balance here. There is still an argument for the cheaper Zen 2 Ryzen 5 chips of course, especially if you can find them sub £200 because that gives you more money to plow into a graphics card. However, I have to be honest in saying that I'd probably still spend a little bit more to go for the Ryzen 5 5600X, seeing the gaming performance that we've just recorded from our performance results, and that's because it looks to be giving you closer to untethered FPS numbers from a really high-end graphics card, and therefore I have more confidence in the Zen 3 architecture lasting successive GPU upgrades than I do for those slightly older Zen 2 6 cores. Of course, if you're using a mid-range or a lesser than high-end card right now, they're both going to be equally fine, but going forward, we think there's more room in the Ryzen 5 5600X to stretch its legs with the FPS numbers because Zen 3 proves very, very good for gaming. So I actually think it is a better option, even though it is, yes, more expensive and perhaps notably more expensive in some cases. The Ryzen 5 5600X justifies its price tag by consistently strong performance across the board, excellent overclocking capabilities and really good FPS numbers in gaming. So I've been Luke Hill for Kickeru. Thank you for watching this video review of the Ryzen 5 5600X. Make sure you check out the written review on the Kickeru webpage. It has more details over there and you can ask some comments and some questions. Let us know in the comment section down below. Have you bagged your Ryzen 5 5600X or are you still waiting for stock to become available in your region? I know a lot of people will be towards the latter point there, but we'll just cross our fingers that availability picks up soon. If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do all that YouTube stuff. Like I've already said, check out the Kicker webpage. You can support us on Patreon and you can buy a cool t-shirt like this from our merch store. Catch you in the next one.